Hi everyone, welcome back. We've all heard of stereotypes, but what exactly are they? In this video, we'll define what a stereotype is. We'll also explain why people make stereotypes. Next, we'll look at how stereotypes are made, as well as how the tri-component model shows the different components of stereotypes. Let's begin. Stereotypes are generalised beliefs about the characteristics of a group of people. For example, a common stereotype is that Australians are laid back and love the outdoors. Stereotypes can also develop into prejudice, which is a positive or negative attitude towards a group that's not completely based on reason. What's more is that stereotypes can also lead to negative behaviour towards a group of people, which is called discrimination. An example of this is rising prejudice and discrimination against Muslim people in the aftermath of the 9-11 attack. So why do we make stereotypes in the first place? Well, it comes down to the fact that our brain wants to be as efficient as possible. You could even say that it's being lazy. Stereotyping is an automatic process that allows us to quickly classify people, predict their behaviours and decide how to act around them. In this way, stereotypes are like mental shortcuts. Now, the psychology behind stereotypes evolved in our brains so that our ancestors could quickly make judgments about their situation and react in a way that optimised their survival. So, like if they saw a lion, it was beneficial for them to stereotype that lion as a threat to their survival. In modern life, these dangers don't exist. However, our brains still tend towards using these mental shortcuts, and the issue is that we can be prone to making inaccurate judgments about someone based on what stereotype we think they fall under. Okay, so we know that humans use stereotypes as mental shortcuts to understand people who are different from us. So how exactly are stereotypes made? One theory is that stereotypes are created due to the influence of culture, we pick up from our cultural surroundings about how we should categorise people through socialisation. Socialisation is a process in which a person learns the rules of a group to become an accepted member of society. People learn how to stereotype at a young age, usually from their parents or the media. For example, children might develop the stereotype that girls like pink and are only interested in fashion because of the toys that they play with. Stereotypes are also developed and strengthened through confirmation bias. Confirmation bias is when we recall, select and interpret information that's aligned with our beliefs. Because of this, people tend to ignore information that challenges their beliefs. So, if a person thinks that African athletes are better than Caucasian athletes, they'll look for evidence in sports games and results to strengthen their stereotype. Just to sum up, Stereotypes are generalisations about groups that form because of cultural influences and confirmation bias. Let's now look at a model that explains the components of a stereotype. This model is called the tri-component, or tripartite, model of attitudes, which was developed by Rosenberg and Hovland in 1960. Our attitudes towards an attitude object, that is, what we're evaluating, whether it be a person or an object, are based on three components, which are known as the ABC of attitudes. These are affective, behavioural and cognitive components. The affective component relates to our feelings and emotions about an attitude object. The behavioural component refers to our actions towards the attitude object. The cognitive component is all about our thoughts and ideas about the attitude object. OK, so how do stereotypes fit into this model? Well, the stereotypes that we have about groups of people can inform how we feel, think and act towards them. At first, we make assumptions about a group of people based on past experience and what we've learnt in our culture. We then develop positive or negative feelings towards a group. Finally, our thoughts and feelings influence our behaviour towards the group. For example, the owner of a law firm may hold the belief that young graduate lawyers are not as competent as older lawyers with experience. This is the cognitive component. They may doubt and have negative feelings towards young lawyers who apply for a job, which is the affective component. This then influences behaviour, so they're less likely to hire young lawyers. Let's wrap up. In this video, we explain that stereotypes are generalised beliefs about the typical characteristics of a group of people. Stereotypes can often be misleading and can lead to prejudice and discrimination towards particular groups. The main function of stereotypes is to categorise people into groups so we can make quick and automatic judgments about them. 
These are known as mental shortcuts. We learned that stereotypes can form from various cultural influences, as well as confirmation bias, which is when we select and recall information that confirms our beliefs. Finally, the tri-component model explains that attitudes are based on effect, cognition and behaviour. This model ultimately shows us how stereotypes can affect how we think, feel and act towards specific groups of people. See you in the next lesson.